thank you very much for giving us the honor to present today. We're going to be talking about um, uh, military sexual trauma, understanding MST. So we'll present an overview of what MST is and personal trauma is, the services that are available um, for MST and personal trauma at the VA, and how to obtain services, contact information um, if you need that, and also uh, any questions specific to military sexual trauma. Um, during the presentation, we may use the term MST as an abbreviation just for time, but it is an abbreviation for um, military sexual trauma. All right, and just as a, a disclaimer, um, we do have some sensitive content, um, not in the form of trauma details in the presentation, um, but just know that this content can still be um, rather disturbing or triggering for some. So please feel free to excuse yourself as needed. Um, and then, of course, be thoughtful and of others as we share some questions or reactions. So the VA uses a term for military sexual trauma, and the description of that is any sexual assault or sexual harassment that occurred during a veteran's military service. Um, by federal law, and the definition is a physical assault of a sexual nature, battery of a sexual nature, or sexual harassment. And what sexual harassment means is any repeated, unsolicited, verbal, or physical contact of a sexual nature, which is threatening of character, and this could occur to a male or a female veteran. And it normally occurs while a veteran was seeing um, or being serving in active duty or active duty for training. What we know about MST is that it's also any sort of sexual activity in which someone is involved against his or her will. Um, someone may be pressured into a sexual activity. Uh, there may be threats of consequences if they do not participate in that activity. Um, there may be implied if you participate in this, that you'll receive higher rank or better services or better treatment. Uh, sometimes that's called command rate. Um, also, when someone experiences MST, they're normally unable to consent uh, to the sexual activity. Uh, we have veterans that report that they were intoxicated when this occurred. Um, and also that veterans have been physically forced into participation. Uh, military sexual trauma can also in, uh, involve uh, any unwanted touching or grabbing or fondling. Um, it's oral sex or anal sex. Uh, sometimes veterans will report that uh, they were penetrated with an object um, or they may have participated in sexual intercourse, but that there may be physical force used or may not be used at all. Also, other examples may include that they may have received any threatening or unwanted sexual advances. There may have been unwanted touching or grabbing or threatened, or they may have actually received any uh, repeated um, offensive remarks about their body or asking them to engage in activities that they did not want to participate in. We also know that MST can occur either on base or off base. It can occur while a veteran was on duty or off duty. Um, and it really doesn't matter who the person that, um, or the perpetrator is. It can be men or women. It can be military personnel or it can be civilians. Um, it can be su uh, su um, superiors or subordinates in a certain chain of command. We also know that a lot of women and veterans have reported that uh, that they were strangers or friends or even intimate partners. And that veterans from all eras of service have reported experiencing MST. And that MST is not an experience. Um, it is an experience and it's not a diagnosis. That gets very confused for a lot of veterans. A lot of times they think that they have, that this is a specific diagnosis, but these repeated events can actually create symptoms that um, result in diagnoses. And this is just a diagram that just shows that sometimes these um, experiences can escalate, where it may have started as touching and then it moves into actual, um, actual intercourse. So this is just a model of how one incident can lead to another and that these um, experiences can, gra can gradually increase and escalate. So the question is how common is MST? And what we know is that this can really be difficult to know because a lot of times 
uh, sexual trauma is frequently underreported. Um, about one in four women and one in 100 men have told their VHA healthcare provider that they have experienced sexual trauma in the military. And when you think about the numbers, that's, that's a significant amount of veterans. And actually, when you look at the amount of men that actually serve in the military, there's a significant amount of men that actually have experienced this. And you know, just thinking about um, um, what Shanika pr presented on the amount of women that are increasingly participating in uh, the military, that this is leading up to a significant amount of women that will have this type of experience. Um, again, although women experience MSD at a higher proportions than men do, because a large number of men in the military, there are also significant numbers of men and women who have experienced MSD. I think the slide is great in debunking a myth um, that this is a woman's issue. Um, the numbers are actually significant and comparable for both genders. But let's consider the impact of trauma and how trauma can invade different areas of life, uh, several aspects of life. Um, so if we better understand the potential impact of trauma, we can actually become more sens sensitive to these issues. Um, we can be more effective in helping our survivors. Um, some survivor behaviors can be rather confusing if we don't understand the, the effects of the experience. Um, so most people have symptoms, regardless, uh, in the immediate aftermath of a traumatic event. Um, overall, tra trauma survivors are actually very resilient. Um, we do see those people who over, over some time, um, the symptoms remit. Um, so they, they do get better, they improve, um, they, they go on to lead fuller lives. Um, but there are a portion um, whom for a variety of factors um, continue to experience um, certain symptoms. And if it, if it goes into longer than a month for some and, and they meet certain criteria, we can see certain diagnoses come out of that. We do hear some survivors describe that after their traumatic experience, they, they felt nothing. Um, it, maybe as an attempt to cope um, with what actually is happening, a way to block out memories, and, and again, just cope um, through a mind-body experience that it was um, so senseless in, in nature. Um, we, we went ahead in our slides to go ahead and talk about certain symptoms that may or may not uh, eventually meet criteria for a PTSD diagnosis. Um, these are oftentimes reported as intrusive types of symptoms. So out of the blue, um, uncomfortable thoughts and feelings um, somehow related to trauma memories. Um, we could also encompass um, nightmares and flashbacks um, to where those are experiences where the person may feel like a piece of the trauma is happening again. Um, so that can be pretty horrific, uh, as well as a nightmare experience of waking up and um, feeling as if you're in that, that event again. Um, so we do a lot of work uh, with our treatment as far as memories are very difficult to experience, but they're not dangerous. Um, so they are different than the actual event taking place again. Um, we also see some avoidance symptoms. This tends to be a very big one. Um, avoidance of people, places, or things that remind them of, of trauma in some way. Um, and, and, and for some, it's, it's avoidance of, of processing it, of, of looking at the trauma memories and working through that. Uh, we may see some uh, behaviors driven to cope in certain ways, which could include substances or not. Really anything can become a coping strategy, and when taken to excess, um, when taken to that point, it can cause problem. Um, we also see some negative changes, uh, maladaptive types of thinking and, and feeling. Um, so we, we see where a person's belief system um, can be shifted, um, can be maybe taken out of some perspective after a trauma experience, um, maybe also in the form of some amnesia uh, with the traumatic event. Um, and then that last slide was just mentioning certain aspects of belief systems, areas that we focus on in treatment, such as self-esteem, how that can be impacted and changed, um, such as power and control, safety and trust. Those tends to, tend to be the biggest ones. And then lastly, we, we can definitely see, see some symptoms of hyperarousal. Um, some veterans really feeling on guard, on alert. So this is, this is more than simply aware of your surroundings. 
Um, so it's, it, it's at the level where anxiety is, is peaking, right? Um, to where they really feel like it's hard to concentrate or attend to the present moment because they're scanning, looking for exits, sizing people up, um, trying to determine in their mind how they might get out if something traumatic or negative occurs. Just to add what uh, Amy's describing, a lot of times that's where we may have veterans come in for treatment, right? that these symptoms are starting to really impact their daily lives. And, and we also see how um, some studies show that not all traumas are created equal. Um, you know, sexual trauma is an interpersonal trauma. So it's um, another one person harming another um, or a group of people harming another. Um, so among women, what we know from some studies is MST has actually been shown to be more strongly associated with PTSD uh, than pre or post military sexual trauma. Um, there's higher rates and a probability of developing PTSD for MST survivors than those experiencing combat trauma. So that's interesting. Um, so uh, there are people who, who will develop PTSD. However, remember, I'm not saying that just because somebody has an MST experience means they automatically have PTSD um, or depression or anxiety. But these are diagnoses, a list of diagnoses and difficulties that are commonly associated with sexual trauma. That we often will explain these symptoms are and the diagnoses are that there are ways to cope with the trauma. Um, we see a host of physical health problems, and so we've listed some for you. There, there are more. Um, so it's it's oftentimes interesting uh, to veterans when they hear, oh, um, you know, my my trauma history may influence the GI pain that I'm having, um, the sexual dysfunction um, that I'm experiencing, chronic fatigue, etc. So there's several other issues and areas of life that are impacted. So we see oftentimes relationship problems, um, difficulty maintaining and establishing boundaries in relationships, um, employment difficulties. Um, so because of how they're trying to cope with uncomfortable thoughts and feelings, that may definitely impact the ability to, to work or um, be around several coworkers or a large group of people. Um, it may impact them calling in a lot. Um, parenting difficulties we'll also see. We'll see readjustment problems. Um, that's pretty common as well. So let's talk about the, the bright side of this, that, that recovery is definitely possible. Um, this is a piece of education and outreach that we provide to our veteran population is, yes, treatment does exist for MST experiences. Uh, VA is actually doing a lot um, for, for our MST survivors. And make sure that I'm giving you all the information here. So VA definitely has our efforts. Um, so they have a mandating clini mandated clinical screening for every veteran who comes through VA, um, screening to, to determine if there's a MST history and if treatment is needed and wanted. Um, every VAMC, and I'll talk about this a, um, in just a minute, um, offers some type of MST-related um, therapy services and services uh, generally speaking as well. So we offer our options and choices when possible um, to give back uh, that veteran to regain some control in the process too of um, deciding what they need and, and when. Um, vet centers are also a very great referral source uh, that we use. They provide free MST related therapy services as well. Trauma recovery and the types of treatment that's available. Um, we're definitely speaking from the therapy side of the house of, of VHA and what we offer. Um, and like I alluded to a second ago, um, just because a person has an MST history doesn't automatically mean that they're going to need or, or want treatment. Um, but for uh, the people who, who definitely say, okay, I'm ready and, and treatment is there for them. Uh, we have several programs across our Vision 6. Um, we offer a wide range of treatment options as you can see here, there's seven different sites within Vision 6, and I have the privilege of serving as the point of contact for MST coordinators across the Vision. So we meet bi-monthly and talk about the programs that are being offered. And, um, I'm just really proud to see how much is offered, um, how the programs are growing. Um, so I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but a lot of evidence-based programming um, provided. So that's um, evidence-based treatments and gold standards for trauma treatment. Um, some of those, including dialectical behavior therapy, cognitive processing therapy, prolonged exposure, um, acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, different sites are also, um, some sites are affiliated with women's mental health and, and health clinics. Um, so that's fabulous. We also see this growing um, 
program improvement of offering supplemental types of treatment. Um, and Shanika alluded to, to some of those. So yoga, mindful yoga groups, um, some of our sites have implemented with great feedback. Um, we've had uh, peer support specialist groups running. Again, great feedback. Intimacy groups, empowerment groups. Um, and these are a lot of these are gender specific. So we have our women's groups and our men's groups options. So that's fabulous. And then we offer mixed gender as well. Um, so, and, and again, just to name a few here, as you can see, um, tele mental health options to our healthcare centers. I know I can speak for Salisbury um, specifically that I offer group options um, to our Charlotte and Kernersville healthcare centers um, the, through tele mental health. So it means I'm based out of Salisbury. I call in through encrypted software through the VA and a large monitor screen, and we talk in real time um, to a group of women at, at each site. Um, so that's fabulous. Uh, it's really uh, making it available, the access uh, of our treatments to veterans so they don't have to come all the way to the parent site if they don't want to. Um, all right, and then. So now we're going to talk a little bit about who is eligible for MST services. So the VA provides free care, including medications, uh, for mental health and physical health conditions that are related to military sexual trauma. So free care is available both for men and women. So an example of that would be if a veteran needs any type of therapy, individual or group therapy that's being offered, according to the list that Dr. Smith uh, noted, that those services are free of charge to veterans. Okay. So neither an individual's um, health insurance plans should be billed for this care, and although sometimes there may be co-pays for services that are not related to MST. And so how that uh, is determined is really by the VA provider that does evaluation for the veteran. Um, a VA disability rating or service connection is not required. So a veteran does not have to be service connected for that condition in order for them to receive MST related care, right? Um, I think that is one of the unique things about veterans that, um, that the VA does offer, that uh, for a lot of veterans, they may never have reported this, right? So then the thought of them being service connected in order to come, we're far away from that, right? And so. Being able to know that you can report this and then get care, um, it can be a pathway to lead towards that. And also that no specific diagnosis is required. So you do not have to have PTSD diagnosis in order to receive that care. Also, the incidents um, do not have to be reported at the time of the traumatic event in order to be eligible for MST-related care. So whereas uh, if you receive an injury while you're in the military, that has to be documented, documented in order for you to receive care. For a lot of veterans, they, they may never have reported this. It may not be anywhere in their record. They may not feel comfortable or safe until they're discharged in order to report this. And we see, I'm seeing a lot of that, uh, where we have a lot of really older veterans who are from older eras that never reported it. I'm actually seeing a lot of younger veterans that have reported it, um, but that are, uh, are eligible for care. And also that the provider of services that they make determination about whether care is MST related. Now that would be more so for medical conditions. Um, and also veterans may ask to meet with a provider of the same or opposite sex if they would, if it would make them feel comfortable and that this option is available within their clinics. A lot of times a, a female veteran may not feel comfortable meeting with a male veteran. Um, um, and a male veteran may not feel comfortable meeting with a female, with a female veteran or a male veteran, so they have an option to, um, a, a provider that is. So they have an option to ask for the type of provider that makes them feel comfortable. And that can be often a, a pathway for them engaging in therapy or treatment. So how do you access care? You could either ask your VA provider um, for a referral for MST services, so that would be uh, if you have a, pr a primary care provider, anyone that's a part of your of the veteran's treatment um, plan, that they can ask that vet uh, ask that provider to be referred for treatment. You could also contact the MST um, coordinator, uh, Amy or I or whoever's listed at that hospital. And if you're deployed as part of an OEF, OIF, or OND clinic, you can also ask that uh, clinic program director to um, refer you. Um, as far as outreach goes, we do a lot of outreach initiatives. We'll be at the, um, the conference that's coming up. We really try to do a lot of education in the community about what is available. And if there are any, um, any outreach um, uh, 
events that are coming up that you would like education on that, please notify us and we'd be happy to be present. And also there's a website, um, they're, they're listed there, um, it's called Made the Connection and About Face, and they're really wonderful uh, uh, websites that veterans can actually click on those websites and um, enter information that allows them to hear veterans talk about their experience with their experience in their trauma and also their path to healing and recovery. And along with that, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, so each VA site will be doing their uh, amping up even, even more outreach and education uh, for MST awareness. Um, teal is the color that represents uh, sexual assault awareness. Um, so look out for a Teal Tuesday within your VA. The Vision 6 day is going to be, looks like April 17th for us. Um, lastly, we have a slide uh, just going ahead to give you information, contact information for each MST coordinator at each site within the Vision. Um, know again that this is a unique service within VA that we give the um, direct extensions uh, to these providers. Uh, we publicize these and veterans can call us directly. Um, and so, as well as um, staff and, and anyone um, who wants more information. Thank you. MST um, related uh, issues. We're already seeing it. We've been seeing it since last year. Um, I would say probably since October of last year, we've seen an increase of either women that have, women and men that have been in treatment, um, recontacting us to re-engage in treatment, saying it's been triggering for them, or we've received new referrals from um, primary care providers uh, in noting that that was what made them decide to come into care. I don't know about you, Amy. Hey, I'm just gonna echo that. One more question, it looks like. Thank you, Dr. Smith. That was very informative. As just a takeaway to the group, in my experience working with homeless and uh, drug addicted and uh, alcoholic veterans, which is substantial, we found in our residential programs that 100% of the women that came to us for services experienced MST. And up to 40% of the men who came to us for residential services experienced MST. That's the impact at the foxhole level. It's enormous and it's dramatic and it's life altering. Thank you very much for your presentation. And just to add to that, alcohol and drugs, I think are one of the primary ways that a lot of veterans uh, end up coping with uh, dealing with the symptoms of, um, of trauma. So um, it's really important. We try not to, um, not to judge that experience um, or that way of coping, and I think it really helps veterans um, segue into treatment. 